there's no difference in the message or the goal. Uh, we just learned more about communication. Uh, you know, I'm a scientist. We started out with no, no political knowledge. Now we know a little more about it. So we're communicating more effectively, I'd say. And, and having more fun because we're uh, doing a better job. Excellent. When I look at him and I look at his decisions, uh, I, he's part of what I might call the political class. The decisions I see him make are, I think, too much those of a career politician where he thinks about what will be good for the next election to elect him. And he doesn't completely forget the people, but I think there's a conflict there when someone's been in office a long time and has nowhere else to go. You see, the founders didn't put in term limits because they felt the people would provide the term limits. And they gave them a chance to vote on it every two years. They did not anticipate what has happened to us. My, my view in my own position is that uh, I believe I could do some useful things. Uh, if I found after one term that I was, in fact, at least on track to do some useful things to be good for my state and nation, I'd ask to stay a second two years. And if I can't be useful in two year, in four years, pass it to somebody else, you probably shouldn't reelect me anyway. And instead of getting it resolved, we got uh, the government and the, the federal government fulfilling its responsibilities, we got uh, money. So they gave us money. That's not what the people wanted. They wanted their industry and their jobs. And moreover, the money became a political issue because once you're getting money, hey, reelect me, you won't get your money. <laughs> so it becomes a, a, a place where the politicians kind of live on the problem, benefit from the fact it's not solved, but don't solve it. Just, uh, I think your congressman should have come in here, got all the commissioners together and figured out a way to revitalize that industry by putting the proper pressure on the federal government. One mad congressman, because they're destroying that his major industry in his district can do an awful lot if he uses the, the position he has, the power he has, and the power of the purse, which is exercises over the agencies. And it's not just one vote, because one guy that's after your agency all the time can fix the problem. And I don't mean you want to go to battle with them, but you want them to understand that you are going to use your entire congressional position against them if they will not act with common sense. In our Constitution, uh, it is required that the Congress vote for a war. Today, uh, we have done it differently. Congress has sort of passed to the President. You know, the President has to come back and ask later, but by then you're in the war. Then you've got all kinds of things. And I think that this uh, departure from the constitutional requirement for Congress to vote has caused us a lot of trouble. I think a big root cause is political people kicking the can to the President and that's not the best way. The Congress should vote for a war, and if they don't have the courage to do that, there's probably not a war we should be in. Uh, Top-down people will tell you, oh no, we know the best way to do it, that one, fit, one size fits all. But my experience teaching students is that it's the other way around, and so I would like, if I were elected, I would keep the resources the same, but I'd try to pass those resources right back to the communities instead of passing them rules about how to run their school. If we are able to restore the overall quality of our schools across the country, and that'll take a long time, uh, you would see homeschooling diminish. I wouldn't have homeschooled my children if they could have gone to the schools I did.